Have you ever spent ages editing a stunning photo using all of your usual tricks and techniques to bring out the best in the colors and the light and the subject, but no matter how many edits and adjustments you make, it still just never seems to feel finished? Well, here's the thing. At a certain point, turning a great shot into a gallery worthy masterpiece is not about what more you can put into it. It's about what you can take out. So in this video, I'm going to reveal the one thing that you can do to every single photo, whether it's a landscape, seascape, portrait, pet photo, or anything else that will take it from pretty good to portfolio quality. And I'll show you three easy ways you can start using it in your own workflow to take your photos to the next level. But first, remember those Where's Wally books or Where's Waldo for my American friends? You'd spent ages scanning the pages trying to find the little guy hidden among those pesky distractions, but your eyes could never settle on anything because there's just so much going on and Everything's competing for your attention. Well, editing a photo is a bit like that because even the tiniest distractions, a stray branch, a speck of dust, or a person in the background can pull attention away from your subject. And when this happens, it doesn't matter how polished the rest of your editing is, the result can still feel more like a regular snapshot than a portfolio worthy work of art. So the more that you remove these distractions, the more the key elements in your photo will stand out. Like if Wally was sitting on the beach all by himself and the more your key elements can shine, the more polished and professional your finished photo is going to appear. Now there's a great new way to remove even the largest objects from your photos if you feel they're a distraction and we'll come on to that in a minute, but let's start with the small stuff first because the surprising thing about these tiny distractions is that you, you might not even consciously notice them, but you'll see how much of a negative effect they have once you remove them. Take this image for example, it looks pretty good on the light, the subject, the colors, but it still doesn't feel quite like a clean finished image. So let's start with the spot healing brush tool and begin removing all the smallest distractions. I like to do this on a new empty layer for reasons we'll see in a second. So look for things like dust spots, specular highlights, tiny objects in the photo like garbage, twigs, just general bits that don't add to the image. And think of it like you're cleaning the shot up, like removing any blemishes from a portrait. Now you can resize the tool quickly with the left and right square bracket keys on the keyboard to make it a tiny bit bigger than the thing that you're removing and then just dab away. Now I'll speed this bit of the video up with me doing this and when we get to the end, I'll turn this cleanup layer off and on a few times so that you can see the before and after version. Now this before version seems so messy and disorganized compared to the after version when we're comparing them, right? You know, how much cleaner does this after version look just from removing all these tiny distractions? But the thing is, there's still more you can do beyond removing these little blemishes, which brings us onto the second technique I want to show you, which is to look for larger patches in your image where something breaks a pattern or contains a detail that just doesn't add anything to the composition. Like this area of the sand dune where the sand shows through the vegetation. If it's not contributing to the composition, then let's just get rid of it. The thing is, it's a pretty big chunk of the photo, so the spot healing brush tool is probably not going to cut it. The good news is that there's a relatively new tool that you've probably already heard about, and it's perfect for this. Now, we won't use it how most people tell us to, like to generate a lighthouse in the middle of a forest or a big fish walking down the street. Instead, we're going to use generative fill as a superior alternative to the clone stamp tool. To use it, simply draw a selection around the patch that you want to remove, right click inside that selection and choose generative fill from the pop-up menu and then hit generate. It's pretty amazing but if it doesn't look perfect on the first try, try one of the two alternative versions that were generated or click generate again over here. Now for really large or tricky object removal you might have to give this a couple of goes to get it looking right but it's a thousand times easier than using the clone tools to remove it manually. But with that said there is a problem that you'll need to avoid otherwise those new generated areas may stand out like a sore thumb. So to see what I'm talking about, let's zoom right in on this image and take a look at how smooth and how clean the new pixels are compared to the original image just behind it. Now the thing about the original image is that even with the best cameras, there's always likely to be a little bit of noise in the image. So to make the generated pixels match this, you're going to want to use an add noise filter on the generated pixels to just rough them up a bit so they match and blend in with the original. Now this next technique is an essential part of every pro's workflow and it lets you remove distractions without actually removing them. Our eyes are drawn to areas of contrast, so if we can reduce contrast in an area, we're reducing how much it pulls our attention towards it. And if we combine that with some kind of slight darkening too, then we can achieve the same outcome as what a vignette attempts to achieve, which is designed to focus our attention on the middle of a photo, but without creating that stupid dark circle around the outside. There's a few ways to do it. But we'll use a simple curves adjustment this time. And then after adding our curves adjustment layer, we're going to darken the image in a way that's different to 
the normal curves method of darkening because it's going to reduce the contrast at the same time. Now the next step is to invert the layer mask to hide this entire adjustment that we just made. And then you can use a soft edged white brush to brush into the image where you want this darkening effect from the curves adjustment to appear. For this one, it will be the bottom edge of the frame like this. Now if you get to this point and your photo still doesn't pop like it should, then it might be because you've made one of the five big editing mistakes that I see people making all the time. So watch this next video to discover what these mistakes are and how to avoid them.